So universal gravitational energy. Like the formula that we had for the force of gravity, Fg equals mg, was a slight oversimplification that worked anywhere where we were near the surface of the Earth. The formula that we've developed for gravitational potential energy, mgh, similarly really only applies if we're on the surface of the Earth. Recall that we developed this formula by saying work equals force times displacement, and then for this force we used f equals mg. So that's how we got mg, and then we said that the distance that the object moved up was the height, so that's how we got our mgh. Well here we're using this force formula, and since that force formula only applies on the surface of the Earth, this uh, equation for gravitational potential energy will only apply on the surface of the Earth. So we adjusted our force of gravity formula, capital G, M1, M2, over R squared, where remember, R represented the distance between, say, the center of the two objects. So this formula is the real proper formula for the force of gravity, and then we recognize that the simplification here was that if the mass of the Earth and the radius of the Earth were put in, that's what led to this little g. Similarly, we can come up with a formula for the universal gravitational energy that will work in any situation. So let's say, for example, we were looking at the energy associated with the Earth orbiting the sun or something like that, or we we're considering the energy of something that was coming from far away and coming to the earth. That formula, I won't derive it, I'm just going to give it to you. The new formula for universal gravitation then is G M1 M2. Instead of being over R squared, it's just over R. It is still the same R that represents the distance between the center of the two objects. And this formula has a negative in it. This negative is reflective of the fact that we have an attractive force. And so the idea is that the energy associated with gravitation is a negative energy. If I were to plot this function, gravitational energy, versus R, which if we recall is the distance between the two objects. it would be a reciprocal, a reciprocal graph like this, all in the negative. So a few interesting things that I want to talk about. I want to talk about how we get to zero on our gravitational energy scale, or where our zero energy reference point is. And I want to talk about what it means to be negative energy. So first of all, we notice something interesting about this equation. If R goes to infinity, or just some very, very large number, the gravitational potential energy will go to zero. See, the behavior is we're going to very large r's is zero. So now, instead of when we're using this formula, where we would say height zero is an arbitrary choice that we choose to fit the problem and make it as easy as possible, where zero gravitational energy occurs for a universal gravitational question, is not an option. It's always the same location. Zero gravitational energy in the universal sense, so when we're dealing with like planets and stuff coming and going from planets, zero gravitational energy occurs when R is infinity, which basically means when the objects are very far apart. So that's what we consider to be zero, when the two things are so far apart that there's essentially no interaction between them. And then, then as they come together, they move into a negative energy state. So what does it mean to be a negative energy state? Well, what's interesting about this is that sometimes this is called a gravitational energy well. 
why would they call it a well? Well, if we imagine a well, so remember the well is like the thing, ah, it's like a hole in the ground where hopefully there's some water at the bottom of it, and we consider this to be height zero, then it's sort of similar here in that if we put things into the well, they go to a negative energy state. What does that mean? Well, we can think of it in a couple ways. One, when stuff is going into the negative energy state, that means it's going to a state of lower energy. And what that means then is that there will be energy available for other forms. If we imagine the rock falling into the well, for example, so here, here's a rock that we're going to drop into this well, then as it falls, it's going to increase, it's going to pick up speed. which means gravitational energy will be going down and it will be being transferred into kinetic energy. So that's one way to look at it. If we move from somewhere far away into the gravitational well, we have energy available for other forms. We see this when asteroids or small chunks of rock fall towards the Earth. What happens is they speed up so much that when they hit our atmosphere, they catch fire, and many of them will burn up in the atmosphere before they ever get to the Earth. And then some will come all the way to the Earth, and when they get to the Earth, they're going so fast, they'll deliver a large energy impact, even to like the scary ideas of like the giant asteroid that I think is, I think is the main theory of what killed off a lot of dinosaurs when it, when it hit the Earth because it delivered so much energy. The second way to think about negative energy is if you are the rock and you're already stuck at the bottom of the well, you're going to have to pay energy to get out of that position. So in this case, we can imagine that we might have to like lower a bucket down and then do work on the rock to get it back out of the well. And so we have to input energy just to get it back up to what we consider to be zero energy. In a bigger sense, we can imagine that if we are on the surface of the Earth, somewhere maybe down here, we're going to have to pay a whole lot of energy to get that object all the way out of this gravitational potential well. And that would be like the energy that we might pay with a rocket if we were going to try to, say, send a space probe like the Voyager space probe into deep space. We're going to have to dump a whole lot of energy just to get it away from the Earth or to get it out of the Earth's gravitational potential well. So that's our new formula. It's a little bit of thinking about what it means to be a negative energy formula. Remember that this negative energy is associated with attractive forces. So since gravitation is always attractive, it only makes negative energy. We consider zero when they're far apart, and that negative energy could be energy that's available to other forms when an object falls into the gravitational potential well, or it could be amount of energy that you're going to have to pay to get back out of the gravitational potential well. So that's our new formula for gravitational potential energy when we're not doing something simple, like staying on the surface of the Earth, but instead, we're, we want a universal equation that will apply in all situations.